Today on Cause It's Fun, I'm going to make a Wonder Woman costume entirely out of duct tape. Now let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is completely cover your dress form in plastic wrap. After you have the entire dress form covered in plastic wrap, you're going to want to cover it with your gray duct tapes. Now we have the dress form completely covered in duct tape. We're going to use this as our pattern for the rest of the costume. Now it's time to draw in some of the finer details that are in the costume. This new Wonder Woman costume has a lot of details in it. It's got a lot of grooves in it and it looks like it's made out of some sort of armor plating of some sort. To do this, I'm going to sketch all the details on with a sharpie. You only have to do half of the costume because we're going to mirror it later on. And if you mess up, just rub a little bit of acetone on it and the sharpie will come right off. Now while I do the tedious task of drawing on all of these details, let me go ahead and share with you some fun facts. So Gal Gadot is playing Wonder Woman in the new Wonder Woman movie, and her body measurements are 34, 24, 34, which just happens to be the perfect proportions for a woman in the 1950s America. Now in the 1950s, the perfect body type was an hourglass figure. Now you would assume that Gal Gadot has an hourglass figure, but you would be wrong. According to bodymeasurements.org, Gal Gadot is the typical example of the banana body type. But do you know who does have an hourglass figure is Linda Carter who played Wonder Woman in the 1970s. And now that you know the stuff you gotta know, let's move on to the next step. Now the next step is to cut the duct tape right off the form. Now if you look at the screenshots from the trailer, you can see that there is a seam that goes right up the side of the costume. Now we're going to use that to our advantage and, and cut right up that seam to get the duct tape off the form. Now that the tape's off the form, let's trim off all the stuff we don't need. In the end, you should wind up with two pieces, a front piece and a back piece. Now the pieces that are going to be the gold pieces, I'm not going to cut out just yet. I'm going to leave those off to the side and I'm going to cut out everything else. The next thing I'm going to do is cover the dress form in plastic wrap again. After I do this, I'm going to cover it in red duct tape this time. Now it's very important that the duct tape is completely smooth at the end of this because this duct tape is going to be part of the finished product and it will make your life a lot easier later on. The next step is to make a sheet of gold duct tape. Now in order to do this, we need to have two layers of the gray duct tape with a final layer of gold duct tape on top. The reason why we have two layers of gray duct tape is because it saves us on having to use more gold duct tape because gold duct tape is more expensive than the gray duct tape. After I lay down the gold duct tape, I'm going to sand down the duct tape. Now this gets rid of the unnecessary sheen of the duct tape and also gets rid of some of the texture that comes with duct tape. Also later on when we start weathering, the rougher surface gives the paint something to grab onto. The next thing I'm going to do is take my pattern piece and trace it onto the gold duct tape. Once I finish, I'm going to flip it over and trace the other side so that way I have a mirror image. This is going to be the base piece for our gold pieces that we are going to put onto our costume. I'm going to take the pattern piece and I'm going to start cutting off the rest of the layers and trace those as well. You're going to want to continue this until you've broken down every single piece into its individual elements. Now I'm going to grab that piece we made out of the gray duct tape that we based our pattern off of. I'm going to pin it back onto the dress form over the red duct tape. Then I'm going to trace the part that I cut out with the sharpie. This should give us the basic outline of where our pieces are going to line up. Now it's time to start assembling some of the pieces. So I'm going to start off with the base layer and then I'm going to wipe off some of the sharpie with some acetone. Then I'm going to continue layering on in the order that I pre-designated when I made the pattern. Now that I got everything where I want it, I'm going to trace the outline of the gold pieces and this is going to be our cut line, so that way I know exactly where I want to cut the red part. Then I'm going to take the gold parts back off the red, and I'm going to cut up the side seam so we can take the red part off the form. Now that I've got it off the form, I'm going to trim off all the extra stuff I don't need. Then, on the side seam, I'm going to take a strip of duct tape, I'm going to place it on one side and fold it over. Then on the other side, I'm going to take another strip of duct tape, and I'm going to lay it on the inside. Now I can put it back onto the dress form. Now that it's back onto the dress form, I'm going to place the gold pieces back on. Now I'm going to use contact cement to tack down any parts that aren't sticking properly. Then I'm going to sand down all of the red duct tape. Then I'm going to get started making the red panels for our costume. To do this, we're going to do the same thing we did with the gold, except for this time we're using five layers of duct tape instead of three. It's going to be four layers of gray duct tape and one layer of red duct tape. Now I'm going to trace out all of my pattern pieces. 
After I cut them out, I'm going to lay them right onto the costume. Now each one needs to be trimmed because there needs to be an eighth inch gap between each panel, and I didn't account for that when I made the pattern. But I did that on purpose because I knew that if I tried to account for that then I'd get it wrong. It's better for them to be bigger than they're supposed to be instead of being too small. Now we have to make sure that each of these pieces is permanently fixed to the costume. So to do that I'm going to put contact cement underneath every single panel. Now I can sit here and tell you that sanding these panels while they're on the dress form gives you so much more control over everything, but really the reason why I'm doing it now instead of earlier is because I completely forgot. So I definitely suggest sanding these things before you even cut them out. Now to distress your costume, what you want to do is put some oil paint on a paintbrush, I'm using burnt umber, and then paint it right into all of the gaps and crevices in your costume. Then you want to go over it with a paper towel and wipe off as much as you can off of the red. Now this is the magic step that's going to transform your duct tape costume into a real costume. This will get rid of a lot of the duct tape texture that comes with your costume and so anybody who looks at it won't even know what it's made out of. Well that's it for part 1, go ahead and watch part 2, that's when I install the zipper and make the skirt. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that way you don't miss a single video. And if you want to watch some bonus material and support me further, check out my Patreon page.